Minister of Environment and Climate Change Catherine McKenna was here in Calgary to announce yet more emissions regulations on the already overregulated oil and gas industry under the same old climate alarmism talking points. Here she talks about how the Liberals will be reducing methane emissions using the same old excuses about air quality, health and safety. After extensive consultations with provinces and territories, as well as the energy sector and other stakeholders, I'm pleased to announce that we are publishing proposed regulations to limit oil and gas methane emissions and air pollution. This is a very good example of how the economy and the environment go together. These regulations will reduce methane emissions by 40 to 45 percent by 2025 and together they will make our economy cleaner, our communities healthier and our economy more competitive. I don't know, I think the air quality is pretty good in the province. In fact, health risks are considered to be actually pretty low even according to the Alberta government website. Also, this is simply just another attack on the oil and gas industry and Canadians because once you cut through all of the liberal nonsense, this is just them coming out and making things more expensive for everyone. Methane is, after all, the biggest component of natural gas, so let's just call this what it is. A kneecap to the oil and gas companies that already can't afford to keep up under the current economic situation in Alberta. Do you think oil and gas investors are going to want to do business here with everything just getting more and more expensive by the day? We've already seen what happened to investors with a carbon tax and really unfriendly business policies being brought in by the provincial government. If McKenna thinks this is going to make us more competitive and create jobs, I mean, she can't believe what she's saying herself. How can you create jobs when there's no industry left to create them off of? And you know these companies are just going to pass these costs on to Albertans that are already dealing with that expensive carbon tax. Here's what McKenna had to say about the cost of reducing emissions to producers. So we, uh, so first of all I would say there's a cost savings. Um, we're now, it's about efficiency, so now natural gas is being re released in the atmosphere through leaks. Uh, our estimates is, and this is really one of the lowest cost ways that you can reduce uh, emissions. Our estimate is the average cost is $10 per ton. Um, but uh, other organizations, including Environmental Defense Fund, have estimated the, that it's $2.76 per ton. So this is very low cost ways. As I say, in the, lo in the long term, you will save money. Um, and we're also going to be creating good jobs because Canadian companies are on the cutting edge. 170 Canadian companies are out there already pro providing solutions. So McKenna says this is going to be so cheap and it's a total bargain at 10 bucks a ton to reduce methane leaks using detectors, restricting venting and taking other measures that will apparently reduce these emissions by 40 to 45 percent by 2025, which is pretty lofty on its own. Except in her own press release, the value of the conserved gas will be 1.6 billion, but the cost for the oil and gas industry, which actually means us, will be 3.3 billion. So McKenna says it's going to save us all money, even though it will cost companies to reduce the emissions that will actually cost us without doing a thing about global warming. Remember that Canada emits less than 2% of global emissions and throwing money at rising temperatures is just another way to take money out of hardworking Canadians' pockets for things like this fancy trip McKenna gushed about. Once again, I mean, this is the, about the opportunity for Canada. We know we're moving to a low carbon future. I was just in uh, Vienna, uh, sorry, I was just in Frankfurt, I'm still a bit jet lagged. Actually, she's been on so many fancy trips on the public dime that she can't even remember to distinguish between them. And another thing, McKenna started up with the whole environmental laggard line and talked and talked about how we needed to catch up to the U.S. But she also demonized natural gas using scare stats. 
Competitiveness is top of mind. Uh, we need to be smart about what we do for regulations, but we see this as a huge opportunity uh, to catch up to what the U.S. states are doing, but also to ensure that we position Canada as a leader. It, we know we're moving to a low-carbon future. Uh, we know that methane, reducing methane emissions uh, is good for the environment, 80% uh, uh, more potent than carbon dioxide in the short term. I've just learned today. Honestly, what planet is this woman on? I know a way we can catch up to the U.S., cut red tape, lighten up on regulations, and approve projects. Let's get our product to market to really help in the fight against those darn GHGs and deliver some LNG to China to reduce their coal use. After all, the United States has increased their use of natural gas in place of coal, and it's reduced emissions drastically because it emits 50% less carbon dioxide when burned. You know, McKenna trotted out her Tides-funded pals at the Pembina Institute, and the press release also mentions collaborating with two groups based in the U.S., the Totally Politicized Environmental Defense Fund and the Clean Air Task Force. So not only are they now openly collaborating with activists in the U.S. like they are with Canadian activist groups, they did hire panelists from groups that openly oppose oil and gas and pipeline projects, but there weren't any representatives from the oil and gas industry around and none of the apparent industry stakeholders were named in the press release. By now, it just has to be obvious that this is just another not so veiled attempt by the Liberals and their activist friends to attack Albertans and the Alberta oil and gas industry. They used to do this from outside the government and now they are the government. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link to subscribe to our Rebel YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on the other side of the story in Canadian news.